NVIDIA's RTX Remix software just released a few weeks ago and there's already been a flood of easy to install mods for some pretty high profile game releases. I've been kind of obsessed with the software lately because it's leading up to an absolute floodgate of remasters and remixes for classic games without the need for the original devs to do pretty much anything. Just a dedicated modding community which is already well underway. Now, most of these mods are pretty much just drag and drop installs that basically work without you having to do anything else. And while there are still plenty of bugs and performance issues with most of them, the fact that any of this is even possible in the first place just blows my mind. Long story short, Remix lets modders capture game data like textures, models, and lighting, and then replace them in real time for a relatively simple facelift without having to get deep into the original game's architecture. And for in today's video, I want to focus on remix mods for Need for Speed Underground 2, Tomb Raider 1, and Call of Duty World at War. And there's several more games with the remix mods, and I also played a bit of the Portal Prelude RTX to see what a more polished project looks like. And all of the mods are, for the most part, in various states of jank right now, so you definitely want to temper your expectations when downloading some of these mods at the moment. Like I said, we're still in the early days of remix mods. In a few weeks or months, I'd imagine a lot of this jankiness that you're about to see will be more or less dealt with. And I'd imagine there's going to be even more mods on the market. Now getting into it, the Need for Speed and Tomb Raider mods were probably the most impressive in terms of their visual impact. The Tomb Raider remix is particularly transformative. For a game from 1995 to look like this without requiring a complete remake is kind of wild to me. Obviously, a lot of the assets on display have been remade by the modder, so it's not like this is just the original game with only ray tracing turned on, but even so, it's kind of like somebody put on their nostalgia goggles and made the game look like how you might remember it from playing it as a kid. Shadowy areas are ominous and genuine genuinely dark, shafts of light break up the corridors and rooms, the underwater sections are gloomy and atmospheric, in many ways it feels like the RTX treatment visualizes the classic game how the original developers really wanted it to be visualized but just didn't have the tech to do so. And one of the more interesting things is how this mod stacks up to the official remaster of Tomb Raider that's actually coming out in a few weeks. In a world where this RTX remix didn't exist, I'd say that the footage for the remaster shows a pretty nice difference between the original and the remaster. But having played this mod, I kind of feel crazy saying this, I kind of think the remix version looks better in many ways. The original remaster looks a bit more flat and almost lifeless compared to the mod, and more of the game's original art direction has actually been preserved by the mod itself. Now of course the official remaster is impressive and I don't want to discount the effort that went into it, and ultimately if you're going to try and play the original Tomb Raider it's probably going to be the better way to play just because of all the other quality of life updates that come with it. But there is something to be said about how the mod modern remaster ends up smoothing over some of the game's original grit and kind of low poly models for a cleaner and more modern presentation, where the remix actually preserves those elements while enhancing some of the cooler areas of the game. Now of all the mods that I checked out, Tomb Raider felt pretty polished for the most part, but it's also one of the smaller and least complex games on the list. The next game I want to look at is an entirely different beast. Need for Speed is a franchise renowned for its visuals. The sense of speed, grit, and uh, street glow that you get from games like this is unlike most racing titles. And that's especially true for the earlier entries in the franchise. So Need for Speed Underground 2 Remix actually has a lot going for it considering it's overhauling arguably one of the more kinetic and visceral racing games of its time. The sound of the highway over passes whooshing past you at 150 miles an hour, the screech of your tires as you power slide around tight corners, and the screen shaking insanity of a crash that sends your car tumbling. That's all sitting right there at the foundation for Remix to work with, and I gotta say it works incredibly well. Adding in physically based lighting, accurate reflections, and detailed shading makes the game absolutely sing. 
Now, obviously there's some rough spots. Cars are all matte when they should actually be glossy. Underglows are all white at the moment. And the original game's level of detail system causes ray tracing lights to pop in constantly. But the quality of this remix mod seems like it's only going to go up from here. The modders are actually promising to fix the underglow in the next version of the mod, and they're aware of all the other issues. And even with these problems, it's still pretty darn impressive. Racing games with pretty good mechanics are kind of the uh, perfect candidates for Remix in that they don't usually have complex animations or detailed character models that you have to work around. So as long as the cars look good enough, the environment should be fairly upgradable to a considerable extent. In fact, the quality of this mod, I would argue, is probably only limited to the time and talent of the modders working on it. It's entirely possible they could keep working on this and turn Need for Speed Underground 2 into a game that looks comparable to a modern title. Now, the goal of Remix isn't to take ugly or poorly made games and just wave a magic wand over them and transform them into Cyberpunk 2077. It's best suited for taking games that already had great art direction and give them the benefit of modern rendering techniques to bring out the great original artistic direction to be more appreciated by modern gaming audiences. Real-time ray tracing was simply inconceivable when many of these games were made. Now an example of what a finished remix title could look like is Portal Prelude RTX. This is an unofficial prequel to Valve's original Portal game. It started off as a mod way back in 2008, and when Remix was first announced by Nvidia, a team of modders got to work and spent eight months giving Prelude an RTX overhaul with Remix tools. And it really is a complete overhaul as well, and honestly it's a fantastic example of what time and skill can bring to Remix applications. The translucency of the big button platforms are super eye-catching. The way the golden red light bounces around the environment from behind wall openings is also so warm and soothing, and the harsh sterility of the chambers themselves seem to cut across the scene. And even simple stuff like water pits now have thick atmosphere to them that make them feel truly hazardous. In my opinion, this is Remix at its best, and keep in mind that this is only the first iteration of Remix. Imagine what will happen as the tools get more powerful and computer hardware gets even more capable. Now the final mod I played was Call of Duty World at War, specifically the Zombies level. Now it got a little harder to be impressed by the time I got to this mod because I was getting so used to how Remix titles look that I tend to forget how the old ones look to begin with. But flipping between the vanilla and modded versions of the game really shows how subtly impressive ray tracing can be. All the lighting in the level coming from the lanterns, street lights, fires, and even the star-filled sky give it a sense of ambiance that the 2008 rendering techniques, even when utilizing the most well-financed and talented developers around, struggled to convey. And Call of Duty games have always had strong environmental art direction, so it's not like vanilla World at War looks bad or anything, or that the Remix mod is a blatant improvement that makes the original visuals totally obsolete. But side by side, it just makes me wonder where games would be today if this rendering tech had been available 10 or even 15 years ago. Back in 2018, Nvidia claimed that the future of gaming was ray tracing when they first released their RTX 20 series GPUs. And back then at launch, well, they couldn't really back up this claim because more or less about three games supported it and turning on RTX usually caused your FPS to completely tank, making it more or less unusable. But I think Nvidia Remix is really proof that the company was actually right. It just took a lot longer to actually materialize those claims. And Remix is simply proof that ray tracing is not just some sort of flashy gimmick, but actually a legitimate way of improving on the technical limitations of non-ray traced rendering. And I think it's possible that variations of the asset libraries and upscaling tools that NVIDIA are providing may even be able to help devs improve the current games and reduce the workload of their projects. And honestly, I'm pretty curious to see if NVIDIA pursues this course as well in terms of trying to make current game dev even easier. 
I'd be curious to know what you guys think about this new tech. Are you going to fire up some of these old mods? Are you excited to see what comes later this year? Personally, I think 2024 is going to be pretty exciting when it comes to remix mods. And you just know that somebody's actually going to take the original Crisis game and do an RTX remix that looks and runs better than the official Crisis remaster. What games do you guys want to see remixed? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more content like this and ding that notification bell to beat the YouTube algorithm with me. Up next, check out this video on my top games that you can get for under 15 bucks. There's some absolute gems in there and some classic games that you should absolutely play if you never have before. As always, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.